So in the last video I paid a visit to Hidden Chess Gaming and once I was done there I travelled just three minutes up the road to another retro game shop, Old School Gaming.
So that was old school gaming in Brayley Hill and he's only been in that old post office unit for just over a year. In fact, his old shop was right across the road and he still owns it to this day, only now he sells Pokemon trading cards from it. Anyway, now on to the pickups and we're going to start off with the four Commodore 64 games I got. And the first game is one I owned back in the day on this particular label and that is a classic arcade shoot 'em up 1942 on the Encore label. Nineteen forty two was released by Capcom in nineteen eighty four and ported to home systems in nineteen eighty six. You take control of daring fighter pilot Super Ace as you battle through twenty four levels based on the Battle of Midway of World War Two, collecting power ups along the way. And if you get caught in the crossfire, there's always the roll button, but use it sparingly. For me, the Commodore 64 version is the best of the home micro ports, and I loved playing it back in the day, but now I'm lucky if I get past level 1. So that was 1942, and the next game is on the Encore label again, and it's a sequel to a very popular game based on a TV show from the 80s, and that is Airwolf 2. Airwolf 2 was released as part of the Elite Systems Hit Pack compilation in 1987, presumably because the game was terrible and didn't deserve a standalone release. This time Elite went for a side-scrolling shoot-em-up in the vein of Nemesis, but bizarrely chose to have you flying from right to left, which wasn't the norm for side-scrolling shoot-em-ups. What's even more bizarre is the fact that this time round, Airwolf is battling aliens. I mean, I didn't watch Airwolf as a kid that religiously, but I know that there was never any aliens in the show. Absolutely terrible. It's as though they knocked it up over a weekend just so they could make use of the Airwolf license. Uh, next up is a game on the Kix budget label. Now, the arcade version of this is completely different to all the home versions, and that is Moonwalker. Released in Europe in July 1990 by US Gold, Moonwalker was based on the 1988 film of the same name. Featuring four levels inspired by sequences from the film, you play as Michael Jackson as he tries to escape his fans and take down evil drug lord Mr. Big. Now, I used to love playing this 30 odd years ago, but I'd forgotten that listening to bad on a constant loop really starts to grate after a while. And the last Commodore 64 game I got is on the alternative software label. Now I did have this particular version back in the day, but I don't really have that many memories of playing it. I know I had it, but I can't remember if I enjoyed playing it or not, because it's not the greatest game. Uh, and that is Big Trouble in Little China. Big Trouble in Little China was released in 1987 for the Commodore 64, Amstrad and ZX Spectrum. You get to control three characters from the film, Jack Burton who can use his fists and later a Bushmaster gun, Wang Chi with his martial arts and sword skills and Egg Shen the magician who dispatches enemies with his magic bolts. 
You can switch between these characters at any time to match each enemy's fighting style, and this is the second game in this video that has right to left scrolling. Now onto the console games I picked up, and I did get some pretty heavy hitters, but we'll get onto those later on. So the next game is the only game I got on the NES, and that is based on the classic arcade shooter, Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke is a run-and-gun vertical shooter similar in gameplay to Commando, and in order to mimic the arcade version's three-button layout, the NES version has the player pressing the A button to fire right, the B button to fire left, and pressing both at the same time fires straight ahead. And if you've ever wondered why there's a full stop in between the words gun and smoke, it's so that Capcom could avoid any copyright issues with a popular TV series that shared the same name. Now onto the four Mega Drive games I picked up. Now this one I've got on various other platforms and it's a puzzle game uh, that was originally in the arcades and that is Clax. Clax is a 1990 arcade game from Atari that was ported to over 20 different systems. The objective of this fast paced puzzler is to catch the falling tiles and create columns, rows or diagonals of the same colour. And that is complete with instructions, as are most of these games I got from old school gaming, apart from obviously Gunsmoke. Uh, next up is a game I don't really see that often, and apparently it's the first ever ocean game for Sega, and that is the platformer Mr. Nuts. Mr. Nuts was released by Ocean Software in 1994 and is your typical platformer with bright, colourful sprites. You play as Mr. Nuts as he jumps on his enemies, whips them with his tail or take them out with your... Um, nuts. Make it through the six levels and you have to face Mr. Blizzard, the evil yeti, before he freezes the whole world. And again, complete with instructions. And in fact, it looks like it's never been played. If you can see that there, it's really mint condition. The manual looks like it's never been read. It's uh, even got the sticker, the Sega sticker on the side, and there's no blemishes or marks at all. Even the uh, the hang tab looks like it's never been folded down. Yeah, really pleased with that one. And the next one is a classic on the Mega Drive. It's not one that I've owned because I haven't got a clue what I'm doing when I play this game, and that is Echo the Dolphin. Echo the Dolphin was released on the Mega Drive in 1992. 
As Echo, you must explore undersea caverns and tunnels in order to find and rescue your friends. The game has a great atmosphere, stunning graphics and tranquil music, a must if you want to have a chilled game night. As for me, 32 years later and I still haven't got a clue what I'm doing in this game. And the last game on the Mega Drive is one that was on my list from the Leeds video game market. And you probably saw me picking it up in the video and that is Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Now, it did me a good price on this because it has got some water damage. I don't know if you can see the wrinkles there on the sleeve and at the top. But again, it is complete with the manual. And I wasn't sure what the game was like. I just knew there was two games on the Mega Drive, this one and the one based on the arcade game. Well, let's take a look. Terminator 2 Judgment Day was one of the many games based on the blockbuster movie. In this version, you see the T-800 fighting his way through eight locations from the film, including the truck stop seen here. With great gameplay, amazing animation and spectacular music, this is my all-time favourite game on the Mega Drive. Only joking, it's a pile of shit. I mean, what is with this jump animation? Now, the nine games you've just seen are the games I was just going to buy from old school gaming. And then I spotted two games in the cabinets. Two games I've wanted for nearly 30 years. And I think I held back off buying them then because I already owned them on the Mega Drive. But these games are so much better on the Mega CD. And the first one is one I really, really wanted, but just didn't get round to buying it and that is Batman Returns on the Mega CD. Batman Returns on the Mega CD was released in 1993 and is basically an enhanced version of the original Mega Drive game. Featuring new CD audio music tracks and fast-paced 3D driving sections that take advantage of the system's hardware used for sprite scaling. You have the option of playing the game three ways, just the platforming sections, the driving sequences, or, if you're up to the challenge, a combination of the two, with a driving section before and after each platform level. You get to control either the Batmobile or the Bat Ski Boat, armed with Bat Discs and heat-seeking missiles to take out enemy vehicles and reach the end of the stage before the timer runs out. So, like I said, I had Batman Returns on the Mega Drive. I think I got it, more or less, as soon as it got released. But when I saw this being played in my local video game shop, I was blown away because the driving sections were so reminiscent of the Batmobile stage from the Ocean Batman game on the Amiga. And finally, the big one. 
So this is a game that was kind of on my radar, but I wasn't actively seeking it. So when this got released originally, I remember seeing it in the same shop where I saw Batman Returns being demoed because they had posters all over the windows. And I didn't think anything of it because I just thought it would be the same game that's on the Mega Drive, but with CD quality music. So I didn't bother buying it. And I only found out a few years ago that this game was completely remade from the ground up and it's awesome. And that is The Terminator. The Mega CD version of The Terminator was released in December of 1993 and is a completely reworked version of the original Mega Drive game. With 10 levels as opposed to the 4 from the Mega Drive, you again take control of Kyle Reese in his mission to protect Sarah Connor from The Terminator. And I was blown away the first time I played this, albeit through emulation, as my Mega CD still needs fixing. The first thing I noticed was the fact you start off with a rifle with unlimited ammo, unlike the grenades as your primary weapon from the Mega Drive version. Weapon power-ups can be found throughout the levels, as can health pickups and shields. But probably the most notable difference, aside from the grainy FMV in between levels, is the fantastic music by Tommy Tallarico. There's everything from hard rock, pop and techno music and fits the fast paced action extremely well. I just can't wait to get my Mega CD fixed so I can finally get stuck into this definitive version of the Terminator. So yeah, absolutely fantastic game from what I saw on the emulator and like I said, I can't wait to get my Mega CD fixed so I can actually try it. I mean, it wasn't a cheap game this, but he did me a, a great deal with this Batman Returns and the other nine games and I will be back at Old School Gaming in the future when I'm down in that area. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, bye.